That's right, we're back again for another 2021 NFL mock draft. And I actually got a full seven round mock draft. If you want to see the complete draft class for your squad, go ahead and check out that video. It should be up right now. But uh, yeah, what's crack lacking? It's your boy Barushmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, come bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. It costs you nothing and it means the world to me. So go ahead and do that. If you get this video, and the actual seven round mock draft the draft class video to a thousand likes i'll get the 2022 nfl mock draft out within this week also flick sports app man go ahead check that sucker out it's in the link in the description below download it. i'm trying to get to 100 members so with your help that would be much appreciated it's basically sports discord we mainly talk the draft but we throw other stuff up in there because you know Wims likes to throw haymakers that don't connect, by the way. What's up with that? But I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. I took, I pulled this draft order from Tankathon. So if you got a problem with the order, then tell your team to do better. I don't know what to tell you. This is all based on my opinion, kind of what I would do if I were the GM. So you're going to disagree. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll probably get to you and... uh yeah, you're, you're going to disagree with me. It happens. My bad. Let's start with the Jets. Trevor Lawrence, I don't think that one's in question. I think everyone knows the Jets, if they're picking number one overall, well, don't trade out of the pick. That's just stupid. Lawrence is one of the best quarterback prospects we've seen in some time. Justin Fields, coming here two to the Giants. I mean, Danny Dimes, oh, it's more like nickels and pennies, if you know what I'm saying. He ain't the answer. Fields is a better prospect. I assume if they're picking second overall, Gettleman is out. So it's basically a whole new regime that didn't draft Daniel Jones. So they're going to go ahead and grab their true franchise quarterback. Then the Jaguars. I got them getting Pinesu out of Oregon. And this is kind of like with this, you have the top two quarterbacks off the board if you're the Jaguars. So I would kind of bank on my second first round pick. Maybe we could get uh zach wilson uh kyle trask later in the draft and even if it doesn't work out that way maybe picking up another guy on day two or day three keep in mind Minshew's is kind of the perfect bridge quarterback so you can we can wait to 2022 to draft an actual uh face of the franchise type of guy like a like a howl or a slovis so i went with the probably the safest prospect in this class Dolphins, this is actually the Texans pick, but Dolphins, you know, they go Jamar Chase out of LSU. Um, it was a tough pick between him and Micah Parsons, but I went with the receiver, surround Tua with more weapons. Chase, he was amazing in 2019. He didn't need 2020 to prove he was among the best in this wide receiver class. The dude's a monster. Trey Lance at the Cowboys F5. I think... The wiser decision for the Cowboys is not to sign Dak to a long-term deal. It's just going to really handicap them in terms of their salary cap. They won't be able to make they won't be able to make moves and surround Dak and especially that defense with better talent. And that offense is actually very good in its own right. I mean, if you're content with getting knocked down in the first round of the playoffs as your best case scenario, then yeah, stick with Dak. I think they go another direction. I would go Trey Lance. The dude from uh, an arm talent perspective, amazing. He does need to work on, you know, <laughs> needs to work on making all the throws, but the guy's got the arm strength to make all the throws and his athletic ability is just phenomenal. Caleb Farley going to the Falcons. The secondary is atrocious. Yeah, AJ Terrell is the best player in the secondary right now. He's a rookie. So get him some help. Put Farley on the other side. He kind of fits the scheme too pretty well if uh, Morris decides to go with that. I imagine Morris is going to be back again for the Falcons in 2021. So they grab Farley. The dude's just, he's got physical traits out the wazoo. He had a banger of a 2019. He didn't, it would have been nice to see it in 2020, but him opting out, I don't think it changes too much because corner, you like to see the elite physical traits and he has those zach wilson going to the washington football team finally got it right i ain't calling him the uh other name 
But Luke Wilson, man, this is a guy that's just been making special throws all year. He's got the arm talent. He's not facing the best competition, but he's got the arm talent. I think Ron Rivera goes, gets his quarterback of the future. We all, I, I've been saying Dwayne Haskins ain't that guy. People want to say build around him. Look at it. Now he's benched. Zach Wilson, dude special. Then the Chargers, they go Jalen Waddle out of Alabama. And I know this seems more like a luxury pick than in actually trying to build a build a squad, especially like if you're in the camp of no, grab some offensive line talent, which I agree. I think you can do that still later in the draft. And honestly, if you want to fill those holes um on the offensive line, at least with more secure or more security or more of an immediate impact then you do that in free agency waddle's just amazing he's just a playmaker with the ball in his hands he's got the speed to be a vertical threat he's shown it in 2022 before the injury obviously and i think he would pair up very well with an allen uh williams and if they decide to keep hunter henry i imagine they will and you just you're just giving herbert all the talent in the world and in case you didn't hear i'm trying to get the flick sports app to 100 members so go ahead it's in the link in the description below download that sucker join the group it's basically sports discord we all have a good time in there also get this video and the seven round the full seven round mock draft to a thousand likes and i'll get you a 2022 nfl mock draft by the end of this week so go ahead do that become bro subscribe let's keep going on and then on to nine it's the new england patriots there wasn't a quarterback i wanted to get here for him uh, i think it would you would be reaching and i mean let's be honest the patriots probably trade down but i went with kyle pitts out of florida i think he's special i think he's a top 10 guy uh we haven't seen athleticism at the tight end position <laughs> like this in oh ever right the guy is just putting on a banger in 2022 i think he definitely is a fair comp would be a Darren Waller, a uh, Travis Kelsey, especially with how good of a pass blocker Pitts is. And he's just special. He's something that they've been missing since uh, they lost Gronkowski or even when Gronkowski was going through all the injuries. It's something they just haven't had. So, yeah, it'd be nice to maybe get another quarterback. Uh, but I think they could do that later on or even a free agency. Wyatt Davis going to the Vikings. It just makes too much sense. Maybe it'd be nice to get a quarterback. There's not one here. But that offensive line needs help. Drew Samia has just been a meme machine. I mean, the guy gets put on his back. So they need to get stronger on the line, especially for a team that wants to run the ball and run the ball a lot. Bengals, they go Samuel Cosme out of Texas. I ended up going with Cosme over Alex Leatherwood just because I think he fits more of what Zach Taylor wants uh, wants to do on offense. He he likes that outside zone run game, and that's kind of what Cosme does. Cosme has experience at right tackle, opposed to Leatherwood, who doesn't. So I think he it, all the right buttons, all the right uh, levers just click for me. You know, when it comes to Cosme going to the Bengals over at Leatherwood, especially if they want to keep Jonah Williams at the left tackle position. So Cosme. He was one of the most athletic uh, tackles in this draft. And then at 12, the Panthers, they go, they get Micah Parsons. The guy, the guy just ends up falling, not because any, it's no fault on his part. It's just good players fall in the draft. We see it every year. It happens to be Parsons here. You say, oh, they got Shaq Thompson. And I mean, Jeremy Chin kind of goes, he plays in the box a bit, but he's not a true linebacker. Like, Thompson's been all right, but grab another guy. Parsons, he really brings that um, pass rusher uh, ability. The dude's just an athletic freak. I don't think I really need to talk him up. And then Christian Barmore going at 13 to the um, Lions, and it would have been nice if Parsons made it here, but that was a fat, fat chance that would happen. I considered maybe a receiver, but I went with Barmore. I think he's got a ton of physical and athletic upside. He's not – he's – in 2019, he just rushed the passer at such an absurd rate. It would be expected for that to go down in a full workload. And it has, but he still has shown it that just a stupid good pass rush ability. Something that 
the Lions are missing on the interior. Patrick Sertan, the second, going to Denver, and it just kind of makes too much sense to me. I think, uh, I mean, Boye, he's been out for the most part, and uh, I guess you kind of like what you've seen a little bit from the young guns there, but I think you need to get a top talent, and Sertan is that. He, he just matches a nice, heavy press scheme, and I mean, the dude could play zone, he could play... Man, he could do whatever he want. The guy is very, very good. And then this one's going to be very hotly debated. Um, but Travis Etienne going to San Fran. I, I just love I just love this so much. I think Etienne, everything he can do in a Kyle Shanahan scheme, just it just fits. It, he, I feel like he was meant to be a 49er. Now the Niners, they'll have a ton, a ton of running backs on the roster in the 2021 season. But keep in mind, the only guy like that's not a free agent after that year is Raheem Mostert. They like to use, especially with all the injuries they've had this season at running back, ETN is just such a special talent. He doesn't even necessarily have to line up in the backfield. You've seen so much from him as a just a playmaker in the passing game that he can be on the field and not necessarily have to line up in the backfield. So I just think he adds another element to this offense. I like it a lot. And then... Gregory Russo going to the Dolphins is just very, very good value. Stupid good value for the Dolphins. So they managed to come out of the first round with Chase and Russo. That is just... And if you haven't already, go ahead, become a bro and subscribe and leave that thumbs up. It really helps the video out a ton. By the way, if I get a thousand thumbs up on this and the seven round mock draft, I get you that 2022 NFL mock draft out this week. So, go ahead and do it. Check out the 7-round mock draft if you want to see the full draft class for your squad. And then at 17, the Raiders. They don't go quarterback. They're getting quitty pay out of Michigan. I feel like Derek Carr has played well enough. And, like, honestly, do you want to replace Derek Carr with a rookie rookie quarterback? I mean, this, this free agent class, which in if I'm assuming Dak's going to be a free agent, they should make, go make a run at a guy like Dak. Even Phillip Rivers. I mean, I think you don't pass on pay because your pass rushing situation is so bad. This, the Raiders are probably one of the worst pass uh, like teams in terms of pass rush in all of the league. They only have three guys that are in double digits as far as pressures. I mean, their sack leader only has, what, four sacks? Yeah, everyone else has one. And they only have eight sacks on the season. So it's pretty bad there. Quiddy Pay, he showed in the opener just some development as far as his pass tools and technique. We know from a physical and athletic perspective, he's just absurd. And then at 18, the Bears, they go Kyle Trask. They'll, they'll go ahead and be like, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and get our quarterback of the future. Because we know it ain't Foles. Sure as heck no, it ain't Trubisky. So Kyle Trask, uh, I kind of like borderline on is he a late first or maybe a second round type of prospect but i think there's enough there when it comes to his arm strength and just his um ability to sling it downfield and make those big plays that we've seen thus far this season i think there's enough there that'll get him into the first round especially for a team that's like uh we we really do want to add a new another quarterback to the mix so the bears they go ahead and do that a bit bit high bit high for my liking but quarterback it's a very valuable position so they're gonna go a lot higher than you expect the eagles go alex leatherwood out of alabama andre dillard he hasn't been able to been be healthy throughout his young young career uh jason i mean they could go another year jason peters but i mean they, they have so many like injuries on the, like that offensive line that i think they do need to address it leatherwood's one of the most uh consistent pass protectors in this draft, he might not have the explosiveness as some of the other offensive linemen on here, but he has been very reliable. He's cut down on the penalties this year. He's very, very good. And the Browns, I was contemplating a receiver, but I, I went, went ahead and went with my boy, Jeremiah Owusu, out of Notre Dame. Something that they've really been missing. I mean, you could say, what what's his name? Mac Wilson. I think the dude's just, just highlight machine. He's 
if you look play to play, snap to snap, he's typically terrible. I know he's out for the year. I don't want to kick a man while he's down, but they need help at the linebacker position. Owusu can be that. He's phenomenal against the run. He's very good underneath in coverage. He's been very good this season. They go ahead, grab him. Jaguars, they grab Darion Kendrick, the Clemson corner, who's been absolutely just shut down all season. Now, I was really hoping for maybe a Kyle Trask at this point. It didn't fall that way, but like I said, Minshew, he's a perfect bridge quarterback. If you want to wait till 2022, then you could do that. Let's go ahead and address this secondary that has just been awful. I also thought about maybe Edge here, but I just went, went ahead and I went with corner because it's such a hard position to get right. Someone to pair up with your boy Henderson on the other side. And then the Colts, they go Devontae Smith, Ty, T.Y. Hill, man, or Hilton, man. He has not just, he's, he just doesn't seem like the same player. They, they, they need help at receiver. They're pretty thin. I mean, if Hilton ain't performing, I mean, I guess, yeah, you got, you got your boy, um, oh my gosh, Pittman. There we go. Uh, who, who's been pretty solid in his own right. Uh, Zach Pascal ain't nothing special. Paris Campbell can't stay on the field. So they get Smith, who I think can be very special. I would say he's more of a top 15, top 20 guy, but is a very, very good class in general. So we're going to see great players fall. Uh, I love what he does. I mean, you can knock his frame all you want. Like, he doesn't have enough size, but his, his physicality at the catch point, his ability to get off press with ease in the SEC, despite his size, is phenomenal. I think I've come around to him. And then the Cardinals, they grab a corner, Tyson Campbell, out of Georgia. Campbell's had a very, very good season. Um, He's he shown all the athletic traits you'd like to see. And let's be honest, the Cardinals, they can't go another year with Drake or Patrick. <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> How did you get to the Cardinals and why are you playing so bad? And then you got to anticipate Patrick Peterson someday will be not a Cardinal. And then the Ravens, this is more of a luxury pick, more of a Add to this defense, get some youth on there. Um, Carlos Basham Jr., I know it has edge, but he put on weight. He's 285. He might be best, especially in the Ravens defense, just playing a, along the line, maybe in a Cleus Campbell role. Uh, you can love what this guy does. He has a mean, mean bull rush. You, I would love to see more consistency, if, especially if he was going to be a top 10. I kind of anticipated him to have a breakout season. Show that consistency. He has not. So I think right here, that's a good fit for him. And in case you haven't already heard, you probably have. I'm trying to get the Flick Sports app. I'm trying to get it up to 100 members. We basically just talk sports in general in there. It's just full sports discord, mainly focused around the draft. But we throw a few other memes up in there. So go ahead and do that. Got the seven round mock draft out as well. So you can see the full draft class for your squad. So yeah do that after you watch this video and then at 25 nick bolden to the packers they need help at linebacker it doesn't matter who's playing back there at linebacker they really haven't had good linebacker play all season they can't stop the run worth nothing nick bolden you know what this man he loves to come play downfield and just stop running backs in their tracks but the best part about him he's one of the best coverage linebackers in this draft so I think they get a solid player here. And then at 26, Jason Owe out of Penn State. He put on a banger uh, in the season opener. I think they really the the um, Titans. They really need help uh, in terms of pass rush. Like Landry, he's doing the best he can. Clowney hasn't really like Clowney's being Clowney, you know. And then Vic Beasley's already released on his way out. So they get Owe. And then the Saints get Jace Horn out of South Carolina. The guy's been very good. I don't think, like, ever since his, like, uh, breakout game a few weeks ago, um, what I wanted to see was a bit more um, ball skills, which I don't think we've really seen, seen after, like, in the last last week. But he's a great corner. He's got, he's got very good athletic ability. I think that will get him in the first round. Very, very, uh, I mean, the Saints, they, they need help at corner. Uh, and you could say in the secondary in general, because, I mean, Lattimore, I don't know if Lattimore is more than a corner, like, cornerback, too. Um, 
just his ability to like sometimes just play to play to who he's guarding at some points. So, I mean, if you're a Saints fan, you kind of understand the roller coaster that Lattimore is. I'm not saying replace Lattimore, but maybe just get some help there at corner. And the Bills, they go Trey Smith. They're going through some something at that left guard position. Like Cody Ford ain't it. Unfortunately, I I have I have my opinions about Cody Ford. And then Spain's gone. I mean, I don't know what happened with that. He was having a bit of a down year, but still. So they get Trey Smith, who has just been dominant, especially at that left guard position. But he has the versatility to really play anywhere along that offensive line. The Bills, they're actually a pretty deep team. It's kind of tough drafting for them. So I think trying to fill in some of your weaker positions, kind of the way to go. And then Joseph Osai out of Texas going to the Buccaneers. I think this is a great this is a great pick because I mean um Barrett, he's gonna be he's coming off the franchise tag after this season. Uh JPP won't be around forever. So I, he ever since they moved him to hey. You are a pass rusher through and through instead of the hybrid role they kind of made him play in 2019. He's been excellent. I think he's going to sneak into the first round, if not early second. And then Kansas City Chiefs do Kansas City Chiefs scenes. They get Rondale Moore. Do they need Rondale Moore? Absolutely not. But this is great value. Rondale Moore is just a freak with the ball in his hands. He's he's just electric. I I often compare him to a um he's like steve smith just with a bit of bit more jitteriness um i mean we know the chiefs they, they didn't need clyde edwards hilaire but they took clyde edwards hilaire in the first round they don't need rondale more but they now you just add another weapon to that offense i mean sammy Watkins ain't gonna be there forever so now you got miko miko Harmon and um tyree kill with rondale Moore. that's just terrifying and the Jets, they get Trevor Lawrence, some help at receiver, because Denzel Mims can't do it by himself. I mean, Jamison Crowder's nice, but let's grab another guy. Rashad Bateman's fallen here. So I think we're going to see a very similar thing we saw in the 2020, uh, the 2020 draft, where we saw pretty solid receiver prospects kind of fall to later um, later in the first round. I mean, we saw it with, um, with CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy going um into kind of the mid first round we saw with uh brandon Ayuk, um justin jefferson they kind of slipped to the late first round so rashad bateman totally can be around with this pick he's now playing more of the slot in 2020 but that's typically where minnesota likes to put their best receivers they did it with tyler johnson the year before so it is what it is but i think bateman gives you more of a um guy that can re- oppose to mims that can attack the intermediate level and do it successfully i mean he, in 2019 he had one of the highest um i think the third highest uh rate of routes ran or routes what was it the third highest rate of uh 15 yard receptions or more so the guy's pretty good and then the steelers they get trayvon morig i think this is a, i think this is a great pick they've been playing um sudden more in the slot a bit so i don't know i feel like uh uh and they they they, they need to upgrade over um emmons get um what's his name uh mika fitzpatrick how can i how can i forget how can i forget he was only a former dolphin but uh get him a guy that actually he can rely upon uh mo rig he plays the run well but even better like the dude's got all the physical and athletic tools um, I kind of commented before the season that his instincts may not all be like as good as some of the other players in this draft, but I think they've gotten a lot better, and he's been probably one of the most consistent pieces on that TCU defense this season. So Steelers go ahead and they get him. They they, they just add to that terrifying defense. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead, check out the rest of my seven round mock draft. It will be, well, it is out right now. So go ahead and do that. Um, see how your team drafted it. Let me know how you think I did. But as always, till next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. <laughs>